Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and I am your watch guy today. Today we are discussing possibly my favourite subject, indefinitely my favourite line of watches. Today I'm giving you my top five Amiga Speedmaster variations. Now the Speedmaster is indefinitely my grail piece. It is my favourite watch, my favourite watch line. I absolutely love it. I did get this idea from Britt Pierce, uh, used to be the watch gringer. Great idea, let's have a go at it myself. Now you might be completely new to the watch world, so if you are and you've never heard of a Speedmaster before, well let me fill you in. In 1957 Amiga released the Speedmaster as part of their professional range. Now it was introduced as a racing chronograph and it was only rebranded as the Moon Watch after the 69 Apollo mission. It's still the only watch certified by NASA to have been on the moon. It would later become a life-saving instrument for astronauts on the Apollo 13 mission. And it has a plethora of different variations through the years. Some being limited editions, some shooting up in value since their release. And one which is the most complicated Omega to have ever been released. So, with that little introduction to the Speedmaster out of the way, let me get into my top five. Coming in at number five, this is the Amiga Chronoscope. Now this was released in 2021 and I really love the vintage vibe that the dial has. It's available in stainless steel and bronze gold, which is basically Amiga's nine karat gold. It's packed with three different measurement scales, the tachymeter, the telemeter and the pulsometer. As well as that, it features some really lovely vintage leaf hands. I think that the blued hands on this one really do do this watch justice. Packed with the 9908 movement, it has 60 hours of power reserve. You could pick one of these up now for a pricely sum of £8,900. Or you could opt to go for the gold version on screen now for 15,000. I think this really did add a very vintage look to the Speedmaster line. And honestly, if I had the nine grand to spend on one, I'd definitely be picking one up myself. I think they're absolutely beautiful and they differentiate themselves enough from the Speedmaster line to make them a new viable option. Moving on to number four in the list. And I actually have the example in hand. This is the Speedmaster Professional, the Moonwatch, if you will. These now will cost you £6,200 at retail, and they are still probably one of the most popular watches on the market, especially for those just getting into the luxury watch market. Those of us that want a little bit of heritage behind their watch, or a little bit of history behind it, but don't want to wait years on a list before they are actually served. This is my Speedmaster Professional. This is the 2017 variant and it is still the crown of my collection. I absolutely love this watch and it will never be leaving my side, I can tell you that much. Nowadays these are packed with the Caliber 3861 and it is actually a master chronometer. Now it's available in plenty of different versions. You could even pick it up in gold. I think they'll set you back between 30 and 50 grand. Yeah. It's a big price tag, but Jesus Christ, they look gorgeous. A lot of people do still opt for the same Hesalite version that would have been worn on the Apollo missions. Personally, I wanted that one because it had the biggest link to the actual iconic moon watch. The Speedmaster Professional is definitely the, still the introduction to the Speedmaster range. 6200 that price has gone up. In recent years, I remember when I first started looking at buying my own and they were around four grand. So definitely moving up in price and definitely something that I think really does have a iconic standpoint on the market. If you want to spend a lot of money on a watch, but you want something that is historically viable and something that will capture the imagination every time you tell a story about it, the Speedmaster is the way to go. Moving to number three, and I am in on the limited editions. This is the Alaska Project. Now, the Alaska Project was so named to divert attention from what it actually was. This was a secret project between master watchmakers and masters of material engineering. 
This watch was designed to withstand the temperatures that it may face in space. The one I'm referencing today is the 2008 model, which was a limited edition release for 1,970 pieces. So limited to 1,970 because the Alaska Project was around 1970. The Alaska Project 2 was set out from Amiga to create a watch that would withstand temperatures between minus 150 degrees and 260 degrees Celsius. So obviously something that would withstand any eventuality whilst being used on the Apollo missions. When it was released as a special limited edition in 2008, it cost £5,600, which would have been a step up on the usual Speedmaster pricing. However, nowadays, if you had the same watch on the open market, it would cost around £20,000 to pick up. Talk about inflation. But it's an absolutely incredible looking piece. It came with this exoskeleton which was designed to withstand the temperatures as mentioned. However, it really did add a insane look to this watch. Imagine seeing astronauts getting onto the shuttle with this on. Another nice feature to it was the subdials with the shuttle like hands on. I thought that that was really unique and inventive. I would probably say that this was one of my favorite limited editions to talk about uh, across the watch market just because so many people don't know about it but it's such an insane looking watch and it has such a crazy story behind it. Again though, £20,000 on the open market, that's no messing about. Moving on to number two, and this is the most expensive piece on the list today. It is probably the most expensive piece that Omega offer. This is the Omega Speedmaster Chrono Chime. It is an absolutely beautiful watch. It's set in Sedena Gold, which is 18 karat gold Amiga's proprietary gold material. The case is inspired by the CK2998 casing the first watch on the moon. It was made as a collaboration between Omega and Blancpain, both parts of the Swatch group. They came together to make this 1982 movement which packs a chronograph function as well as a minute repeater. Also with an aventurine dial, this gives a real exotic look almost of a galaxy type of design to the dial itself. A grand faux dial as Amiga would call it themselves. It's just insane to look at even in images. And as I say, the most complicated watch that Amiga have ever produced. Obviously it comes in an insane presentation box as you'd expect from Amiga. The case back is even a sight to behold this watch is incredible and it's designed to compete with the absolute pinnacle of the market this if you wanted to pick it up would set you back in the range of half a million pounds four hundred and eighty four thousand three hundred pounds to be precise an insane figure something that we can only really imagine but my god it's a beautiful watch and it is the pinnacle of Omega's watchmaking prowess watchmaking between Omega and Blancpain even just an insane concept and something that is a sight to behold now moving to the final piece on this list and if you know me if you've spoken to me about grail pieces or spoken to me about watches you will know that this is my ultimate grail this is that unachievable grail if you will the thing that you'd buy first if you won the lottery this is the amiga speedmaster snoopy 45th anniversary edition this was made as a 45th anniversary edition to amiga's snoopy award now that's obviously a very comical very funny type of association to have but it actually came from one of the most serious situations that amiga had been involved in in the 1970s, the Apollo 13 mission was returning to Earth. Obviously, the astronauts on there still wearing Amiga Speedmasters, as the NASA certified. While returning to Earth, they actually found themselves adrift from where they needed to be. They needed to perform a 14-second burn to realign themselves with the Earth. What happens if they didn't? That was it. They were done. 
the shuttle would drift off into space and never be seen again. What complicated matters further is that the system shutdown had already begun. They had no computerized clocks to go off, nothing to time that 14 second burn apart from the watch on their wrists. They counted the 14 second burn on the Amiga chronograph scale, realigning themselves with where they needed to be and re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. These watches saved their lives. That returned them safely back to Earth and is probably my most goosebump inducing story that I know in the watch world. It's just incredible. All eyes on this shuttle, everyone holding their breath. And the thing that saves them is not the technology packed into the shuttle, not all of these amazing machines, but a mechanical chronograph watch tied to their wrists. It's an insane story, one that you wouldn't believe if it wasn't in the history books, one that you'd see in films. And really, that's what made me fall in love with these watches. That mechanical saviour aboard the Apollo 13 mission that brought these astronauts back safely. The story behind it is insane, but the watch itself is also gorgeous with this black and white aesthetic, with a monochrome look to the watch itself, with that 14 seconds highlighted with what could you do in 14 seconds. The Snoopy comic on the subdials and a 95 medallion on the back of the watch. The watch is just insane to look at. The comic look of the piece itself really does speak to me and the story behind that is just incredible. These watches now trade for around £38,000 and that's why this would be my if I won the lottery piece. I don't imagine that I'm ever going to be able to afford one of these watches. My actual hope is that I will be able to see one of these pieces in person at some point throughout my lifetime. I don't imagine that I'll ever have the 38 grand cough up for one. So I'd reserve myself to just having one in hand for a little bit. Guys, thank you for watching this video. This top five has been really nice for me to make. A little bit of a relief from the usual reviews and unboxings. And more of a discussion top five points of view. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these videos. More topical, more conversational. Let me know in the comments what your favourite Speedmaster is. Because I would love to know if I've missed any of the list. Or if you have any discussion points for it. The comment section is below. Remember, if you wanted to pick up a pre-owned watch, then head over to the watchguystore.com, linked in the description. JTWG10 will get you 10% off your orders. Thanks for watching this, guys. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you in the next one.